Excellent! What's up guys, welcome to my monthly builds video for August 2016. Every month I create a couple computer build parts lists based on your votes and feedback from the previous month and then I'm actually building one of them every month as well. So uh, here's a look back through history at my saved parts list from the past on PC Part Picker of course. I have three, uh, technically two, but kind of three builds for this month as well. And uh, last month I asked what PC builds do you guys want to see in August and you all voted very, it was very contentious. There was lots of uh, close voting here, but uh, 20 28% one with the $1,200 all-rounder. However, last month I built a $1,200 system that I felt actually fit perfectly into this category. So for that reason, I vetoed this one and I went with the 26% option, cheapest VR-ready system plus headset. So we got both of those. If you guys want to vote for next month, uh, link is down in the description. What PC builds do you want to see in September? And your options are right there. That $1,200 build as well, if you guys want to check it out, links are also in the description. You can watch me actually assemble the dang thing. Uh, it turned out really, really nice. I was super happy with the final finished product. Uh, super clean. And then I actually went through the trouble of testing it and benchmarking it too. So uh, check out both of those videos uh, because I think you will find they are just jam-packed with information and they're, they're super useful. Moving on to this month's build though for August 2016. So here's the $1,300 VR build plus Oculus Rift. Now I wanted to do a full build because when I've done builds before and I've said, this build is VR ready and people have said, that's not VR ready because you don't include the VR headset, the head mounted display, which is a significant amount of the cost to be fair. So um, $600 is what you'll pay for an Oculus Rift and that is the cheapest viable, full VR ready capable headset meant to go with a gaming PC. So that is what I've included. Beyond that, you have essentially the rest of the price which came in at just shy of $1,300. So you have about $700 worth of computer going along with that Oculus Rift headset, which is, I just sort of manually put that in there since uh, PC Part Picker actually doesn't have it listed. Anyway, so for the CPU, which is probably going to be the most controversial choice, I went with an i5-6500. Now there are obviously other viable options for CPUs that are Oculus Rift ready, but I wanted a quad core and uh, I like Skylake because it's new and it's got the best instructions per clock performance and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Turbo will go up to 3.6 gigahertz. Uh, the 6400 is also a full quad core CPU from Intel that could also slot into this. Uh, it's about 20 bucks cheaper, but it has a lower uh, base clock or a lower boost base and turbo frequency, so you're not going to be able to get quite as much performance out of it, especially if you're doing the BCLK overclocking. Okay, uh, motherboard is this one right here. It's a Gigabyte H170M DS3H, only about 80 bucks. You can get it as cheap as 70, depending on where you look for it, and it's got pretty much like everything you would need for a motherboard. I went with Micro ATX to keep the size down a little bit, so you do have a little bit of expansion. Of course, your slot for your uh, uh, graphics card right there. It's even got an M.2 built in there as well. Uh, for I.O., you've got uh, your display outs, which you're probably not going to use because you'll be using your discrete GPU ones and uh, everything else you need. Some USB 3, all that good stuff. No uh, USB Type-C on here. That's the only real downside. But you do have two uh, USB 3.0 front panel ports, which you aren't going really, gonna to really be able to use with the case I chose, but who cares? Anyway, uh, for a storage device, we went with an, a simple SSD. 240 gigs is enough for your operating system and some games. If you want more storage, find an old one terabyte hard drive or something and drop it in there as well. 60 bucks for 240 gigs is kind of the going rate for a bargain on an SSD right now. And it's, it's not the fastest SSD in the world. It's a team SSD, but if you look at a SATA SSD and the reads and writes are up there in the 500 megabytes per second range and your IOPS are around 70 to 100, thousand you're going to be getting most of the performance and going beyond that you're not going to get a whole lot memory choice here is from gskill i actually had some team memory in here but it disappeared as of this morning as i was trying to set this all up but anyway 34 bucks for an 8 gig kit of memory 2400 speed uh who cares if it matches there's no side panel on the case for the graphics card i went with a one that i was hoping you could actually find this was in stock yesterday it is not in stock anymore uh finding an rx480 that's in stock is difficult my apologies and also this is a reference design uh if you're gonna get a 480 and you're going to try to keep your eyes out and find one that's in stock, I would definitely recommend going with an aftermarket design rather than the reference design that I have listed here. Again, I was just trying to go for one that's in stock and also around the actual price. So 240 to 250 is kind of what you'd pay. The higher end, more expensive 480s kind of get you up into the GTX 1060 range and then it becomes more of a, a question whether you're getting the most bang for your buck. But the RX 480 has proven itself to be very capable when it comes to VR performance and it's got 8 gigs of memory and it's a good GPU. I like it. Anyway, uh, for our case, we have a Fractal Design Core 1100. It's a $30 case. It's micro ATX, and it's got a USB 3 front panel connector. What more do you want? I guess maybe HDMI on the front for a VR build. Could be kind of useful. 
I don't know. Uh, other than that, though, you know, it's just really kind of a no frills case from uh, Fractal, but you know, again, it kind of gets the job done. Micro ATX got enough space in here for some storage drives. Uh, your power supply, of course, goes up at the top. Um, you know, it's it's a case, thirty bucks uh, for power supply. Finally, I went with the EVGA five hundred. Uh, this is the five hundred B. It's eighty plus bronze. Again, a kind of no frills power supply, but it is eighty plus bronze rated, so a decent. Uh, performance it's not going to have super fancy looking all black cables or anything you do have ketchup and mustard but again it's going to get the job done and when we're looking for the cheapest system we can build that's vr ready this is going to be a solid power supply for you and look if you count the rebates you can get it for as cheap as like 28 bucks right now so that is a very good deal in my opinion and this whole system comes in at uh, just shy of 1300 dollars, and that is including 600 dollars of the price for the uh, oculus rift which you know, that'll get you off, off the ground, up and running. And, you know, 1300 bucks total for all that, including the headset, I think, is a pretty good deal, especially when you consider, you know, compare just compare it to a Titan X, which costs 1200 bucks by itself. For the second build, I went kind of over the top. I wanted to do a two-way GTX 1080 build. I'm also kind of considering that I'm going to build one of these systems later in the month, and I wanted to do something that was feasible if possible. So this is actually kind of an Asus and Corsair build, and I leaned towards Asus and Corsair components, partially because Corsair might end up uh, sponsoring the build if I do it later in the month, although that is still TBD, so we'll leave that uh, to your... Uh, we'll, we'll figure that out later. Anyway, total price here is actually $35,42.89 as of the um, filming of this, and you'll notice we have really high-end parts, so I, I figured this was going in like groups of 600 So $600 for the CPU, $600 for like the memory and the motherboard, 600 bucks each for your graphics cards, uh, 600 bucks for storage, I guess, but that is 11 terabytes of storage. So what I did was I did this whole build with the Corsair and Asus parts, and then I redid it, which I'll come back to in, uh, once I go over all these, and uh, I shaved like five or 600 bucks off the price. 6850K is a six core processor from Intel, Broadwell E, and if you want a really, really fast processor, you kind of have to go this route, although it is very expensive. So $606 is what these are selling for right now. Uh, you can get a six core Broadwell eCPU for less money than this by going with the uh, 6800K. That is down around $400. However, that one has 40 PCIe, I'm sorry, that one has 28 PCIe lanes, whereas this one has 40 PCIe lanes. The choice is yours whether you think that's uh, valid or not. Uh, I actually went with the 5820K with the second version of this build, but 6850K gets you six core, 3.6 gigahertz turbo. It is unlocked for overclocking and all that good stuff. So a very, very powerful processor. Whether or not it's worth the price is of course up to your discretion. I wanna keep that nice and cool. So we have the Corsair Hydro Series H100i V2, uh, 240 millimeter CPU cooler. Uh, I also went with the black and white color scheme for this build. I don't think I mentioned that yet. Uh, this one has some little plates you can swap in to make the colors match and everything. And uh, all in all, very, very nice cooler. They've done some upgrades from that for the uh, compared to the V1 version. For the motherboard, I went with the Asus X99 Deluxe 2. This is a really nice motherboard and I actually just finished shooting a review on it. It comes with an insane amount of accessories. So even though you're looking at a pretty expensive motherboard, which costs over $400, $420, at uh, Newegg right now, um, you get some pretty compelling add-on options like a uh, uh, Thunderbolt 3 card that they drop in there. You get the fan splitter option as well. You get an M.2 riser card, uh, a bunch of other little random accessories and stuff in there too. So I thought it made a little bit more compelling deal. It's also got RGB LEDs that uh, actually look pretty cool when they're lit up and stuff. I did a demo of that. That video should be up in just a couple days. So stay tuned for that. Um, anyway, very nice motherboard. Might, again, be more expensive than uh, what some people want to spend, but I think it'll look pretty cool. Uh, Corsair Vengeance LED series uh, memory is what I chose for this one. 32 gig kit, 4 by 8 gig. This is 2666 speed. And I went with this again because I was kind of sticking with the Corsair and Asus theme. These are also new as of uh, Computex this year, and they finally have actually launched. Uh, I chose the version with the white LEDs across the top, so the tops of these sticks have LEDs that look pretty stinking cool. Uh, and Corsair is even working on software to make them dance for you and everything. Um, so yeah, that's why I went with those. Still more expensive than what you could get, So, but I'll, I'll come back to that. SSD have a 960 gig SATA 3 uh, Neutron XTI. Corsair doesn't have a huge range of options when it comes to SSDs in the 2.5 inch range, but they do have some very solid options, and the Neutron series is very good when it comes to write consistency. This one's 350 bucks though, I believe in the actual uh, parts list, it's less than that. Yeah. Oh no, 350 at Newegg. Apparently, that's the cheapest, cheapest price you can get to, get for that. But still, 
very fast SSD, 960 gigs, and again, there are better Christ to performance options that I'll come back to in just a sec. Toshiba 5 terabytes, 7200 RPM uh, storage drive. These are 3.5 inch mechanical drives. I just wanted to throw in a bunch of storage since this is a high end build. I was actually looking for a single eight terabyte drive and I decided to go with two five terabyte drives because these, the single eight terabyte drives are around $300 price range. Two of these, you can pair up in RAID if you want to or give yourself some redundancy uh, and either speed or redundancy for RAID zero or RAID, RAID one and you'll get 10 terabytes of storage or five usable terabytes if you go for RAID zero. I would go RAID, I'd go RAID one this option. Just give yourself some backup. Uh, okay, for our graphics card, I have two GTX 1080s. Uh, since it was an Asus motherboard, I just decided, well, let's stick with an Asus graphics card and went with the ROG Strix version. Um, however, these are, again, really hard to find, just like the 480. So it's out of stock here. This is at least a reasonable price. If $600 really is the MSRP of the uh, GTX 1080, then 630 I think, is a very reasonable price to pay for a upgraded version with the Asus Strix uh, cooler on it and RGB LEDs and all that stuff. And again, this was something that was in stock yesterday, but for 1080s, you just really have to keep an eye out. If I actually do this build, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get a hold of two of these, but I will at least be able to do two standard uh, uh, Founders Edition 1080s for that. I know I can obtain, but who knows? Maybe I'll get the Asus Strix cards. I actually might be checking out an Asus Strix uh, GTX 9 se or 1070 fairly soon, so, but that still remains to be seen. Okay, uh, moving on to the case. Corsair Car Carbide Series Air 540. I was considering the uh, 780T as well. This one's a little bit cheaper, still full ATX. I think it's a nice little uh, boxy system. You get a bit wider footprint with the box style design, but uh, you can still, of course, fit everything in there, and of course it will fit uh, our cooler, and since it's a Corsair case, we know it's got good build quality and all that good stuff. And I like how these looks, uh, keeping the power supply on the opposite side and everything. I think it turns out really nice, especially with a couple graphics cards in there. For the power supply, we have, of course, our HXI series, 1,000 watts, 80 plus platinum. Uh, so 1,000 watts, I think, is a good, you could get away with it like 850 even or, or less with two 1080s, but 1,000 watts, I think, is a good round number. 80 plus platinum is uh, almost the highest level of efficiency you can get. 200 bucks for this, although you can get a rebate right now. Um, so you're going to be able to like connect this up with the your other Corsair stuff and use Corsair monitoring with Corsair Link, which is kind of cool. But again, if you don't want to spend that much, you can get this build for a lot cheaper. But we are shaving some pieces off. Anyway, so just to compare these two builds, this is a 5820K, still with 1080 SLI. This comes in, so it's at 2850 earlier today, and it's actually dropped even less, 2814. Um, again, that's compared to our original builds here with similar product, with similar specs. 354289 is what I'm currently seeing for that one. Now, what did we change th here? First off, of course, most obviously is going to be the processor. We shaved uh, $240 or so off the cost of the processor by going with an i i7 5820K. So this is a last gen Haswell E processor. Uh, it's not quite as fast, but it still has six cores. It still has 28 PCIe lanes. So it's still going to be just fine for your two-way SLI support. You might have a little bit more limitation when it comes to extra connectivity on the motherboard with something like this. Because if you've got two-way SLI, it's using up probably eight by eight of PCIe lanes and you have whatever's left over for your U.2 and your M.2 and other storage and uh, USB 3.1 and that kind of thing. So you are shaving off some of your performance, but as long as you're not maxing out your I.O., you're still going to get uh, most of the performance with the 5820K. Went with an air cooler for 40 bucks rather than the liquid cooler for over $100. This is an Enermax ETS-T40. It's black, so it'll match and everything. Went with an, still an Asus motherboard, still a very solid Asus motherboard, the X99A2 here instead of the Deluxe. This one, again, you know, it's got everything you need. It's not quite as high end and it doesn't have quite all the bells and whistles as the Deluxe, but still it's gonna get the job done and uh, anyone who gets it, I'm sure will be totally happy. Uh, wait, I lost my list. Uh, went with the 88 at Premier, 960 gigs. So this is a full over 100, and, this is like $140 cheaper for this 88 960 gig SSD compared to the, the Corsair. Wait, I skipped the memory. Here's the 8 Premier. Look, I don't even have a picture of it. Surely Newegg will have a picture of it. There. Uh, 8 Premier SP550 seems to be really hitting the price to, to the bang for your buck uh, dollar amounts when it comes to SSDs. Um, but yeah, just a lot cheaper. 
not going to be quite as fast as the XTI, of course. Uh, for the memory, I just went with about a 30-ish dollar cheaper kit from Crucial Ballistics. Uh, this is a very simple kit, but it's still going to match with the color scheme. Uh, and then finally, for the power supply, I went with an EVGA, 1000 watt, 80 plus gold instead of 80 plus platinum. And you still get, again, the same amount of wattage, a little bit less efficiency. Your power bill is going to be slightly more, but saves about 40 to $60 dollars. No, wait, 120, I guess that's including a mail-in rebate. So it saves 60, 70, 80 bucks, depending on whether or not you include that mail-in rebate. And those are all of my builds for the month of August. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you did, uh, hit the thumbs up button, leave me comments in the comment section, and let me know uh, if you like this video or what you do differently or your build that you picked out that's way better than the builds that I picked out. And I'm gonna do one more straw poll down there where you guys can vote on which of these uh, systems you think I should assemble later this month. It's gonna be in a couple weeks because I'm going on a trip uh, in a few days here, and I will be telling you more about that as I'm on the trip. Um, but in the meantime, let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.